Hi, I'm Lauren Hirschap, inventor of the Brunton Axis Transit. In this video, I'll show you how the axis can simultaneously measure the trend and plunge of linear geologic features. First though, let's review the types of lineations that geologists measure and review what trend and plunge are. So what are lineations and why do geologists care about them? A common geologic lineation is the Slicken line. These are linear grooves or mineral growth patterns that occur along faults and are aligned parallel with the fault's sense of slip. Measuring the orientation of slicken lines tells you about that fault's past motion. Another common lineation is erosional grooves or striations. For example, these glacial striations illustrate the direction that ice was moving when the glacier was here. Ripple marks from the motion of water over soft sediment tell us about paleocurrents and depositional environments. The axis of a fold is a line, similar to a towel rod over which a towel is draped. Measuring fold axes forms a useful data set to better understand fold geometry and deformation history. Other linear geologic features include metamorphic crenulation, stretched minerals or clasts from tectonic strain, or aligned minerals from magma flow. The list goes on. A complete lineation measurement consists of two parts, trend and plunge. With lineation measurements, the vertical reference plane passing through the lineation is really important. Even though we usually say trend and plunge, let's talk about plunge first. Plunge is similar to dip in that it is the vertical angle between the lineation and a horizontal line. A horizontal lineation has zero degrees plunge, and a vertical lineation has 90 degree plunge. Trend is the directional bearing of the vertical plane that passes through the lineation. In other words, trend is the same thing as plunge direction. Unlike strike, though, trend only has one correct bearing because it is the direction towards which the lineation plunges down. The axis is the only transit that can simultaneously measure the trend and plunge of lineations on any surface. For this first example, I'm going to show you how the axis can measure the trend and plunge of these slicken lines, a lineation formed by fault motion along this boulder. For all lineation measurements, the lid of the axis should form the vertical reference plane that passes through the line. The minor axis will be your main measurement axis for trend and plunge. So with the contact method of measuring trend and plunge, the first step is to rotate the lid in standard configuration to its 90 degree stopping point. Then place the far edge of the lid against and parallel to the lineation being measured. Next, level the compass face by rotating it around its minor axis and also pivoting on the edge of the lid until the round level is centered and the compass face is leveled. In this configuration, when the compass face is level, the lid is perfectly vertical and forms the reference plane that passes through the lineation make sure that you keep the compass face flush against the lid in its 90 degree angle. Plunge can be read off of the lid protractor where it intersects the top of the compass face in this case. For trend, press and release the needle button three times. But remember that trend is a little more complicated than strike because it has a specific direction. Remember that trend is the direction of down plunge, in this case, towards me. To help you know which end of the magnetic needle to read, we've put some handy north and south indicators, both on the top of the lid protractor, as well as inside the hinge block. So in this case, the S is visible, and it's the side of the protractor I'm reading. So I want to make sure I read the south seeking end of the magnetic needle for trend. This is really important. Make sure that you don't read the incorrect end of the needle or your lineation measurement will be 180 degrees in the wrong direction. So now to show you the opposite case, I'm going to measure the trend and plunge of these slicken lines that are plunging away from me. So the first step is to place the outer edge of the axis lid against and parallel to the lineations. 
keeping the compass face flush against the lid in its 90 degree position, rotate it around its minor axis while also pivoting on the edge of the lid until the round level indicates the compass face is level. Then press and release the needle button three times to reset the magnetic needle. Plunge angle can be read where the top of the compass face meets the protractor lid. And trend, or plunge direction, in this case now, can be read from the north seeking end of the needle because the N is exposed on the inside of the hinge block and the N is the side of the lid protractor that you read. For some geologists, alineation measurement is more easily done with rake instead of trend and plunge. To measure rake with the axis, hold its side against the plane, level it using the round level, similar to how you would measure strike with traditional transits, then pivot that edge up to free up the major axis, which you want to align then with the lineation, and your rake angle can be read off of the hinge dial. Measuring the trend and plunge of lineations on overhanging surfaces used to be really tricky with traditional transits. But with the axis, simply rotate the lid until its outer edge is above the compass face. Place that outer edge along the lineation, keeping the compass face flush against the lid. Level the compass face. Then remember to reset the needle by pressing the needle button three times. Now, plunge should be read where the base of the compass meets the protractor on the lid. And in this case, you use the same rule. If N is exposed, you read the north seeking end of the needle for trend or plunge direction. The final thing to discuss is if you can't use the contact method to measure the trend and plunge of alineation. In this case, you'll have to use the sighting method. But luckily, the axis can also measure trend and plunge simultaneously using the sighting method. So to do this, let's pretend that this lineation is out of reach. You want to make sure that first you're directly in line with trend and plunge of the lineation. Sight the lineation through the sighting tube, rotating the lid around its minor axis until the tube is directly in line with the lineation, doing your best to keep the compass face level. Then press and release the needle button three times. Plunge can be read where the top of the compass face meets the lid. And in this case, because the S is visible, I would read trend off of the south seeking end of the needle. To sum up, the axis can simultaneously measure the trend and plunge of any lineation on any surface. Some things to keep in mind. When the compass face is level and the lid is in its 90 degree position flush against the compass face, the lid acts as the vertical reference plane passing through the lineation. The minor axis is the important measurement axis for trend and plunge. Make sure you're conscious of which end of the magnetic needle to read since trend is one directional, down plunge. And that's how to measure trend and plunge with the Brunton axis.